You mentioned bioavailability, and, and explain that a little bit. And are chelated materials more bioavailable? Has that been proven than getting them right. through other sources? So the bioavailability is a, uh, is a sort of a first question that most people want to know about with any ingredients, and, mm -hmm. and iron is no exception. Um, let's begin by talking about what, the, uh, what is known about bioavailability of conventional ferrous salts things like ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate, uh, even some of the polysaccharide ions. Um, typically, uh, the uh, bioavailability or the amount that is absorbed is somewhere between the range of about 5 to 30 percent. So there's tremendous variability. Mm -hmm. There's uh, in, interpersonal and intrapersonal variability. If somebody is very iron deficient, they will absorb uh, within the first several days much more than if they were not iron deficient. So, um, so that's a sort of a moving target. That's number one. Number two is that, well, and if we look at this range, the typically accepted um, understanding of ferrous salt bioavailability is about 15%, 14, 15%. Let's use that as a useful number. Uh, several studies have demonstrated, you know, in the early 2000s, um, era that um, the bioavailability of chelates, bisglycinate, ferrocal, ferrous bisglycinate has been the most studied uh, iron chelate. That's somewhere in the range of about 40%. Some of them have been a little higher, some a little lower, but mm. again in, in the range, in the, in the, in the 30 to 50 percent range. Um, that's been done with uh, radioisotope, uh, you know, double labeling studies, various ways have, have looked at that. Uh, and in fact, there's a study that's also looked at uh, red uh, at hemoglobin regeneration, taking anemic patients, um, seeing what their hemoglobin was after a period of time, um, it's four weeks, six weeks, whatever, and uh, seeing what the hemoglobin response has been. From that, we know that uh, each gram of hemoglobin requires 150 milligrams of, of iron. So you can back calculate how much iron was absorbed. That's a very nice. Okay sort of clinical way of determining this mm -hmm. more or less 40% figure. But here's something important, Scott, and that is that um, most of the bioavailability studies of uh, the salts um, and most ions have been single dosing studies, which means that they bring in subjects, um, they take blood, give them one tablet of whatever dose or, or a solution with mm -hmm. the amount of iron, and then they would measure the amount of iron that appears you know, in their blood over the course of the next 24 hours. And from that, they would then calculate what the bioavailability is. So it's single dose study. It turns out that, um, that there was uh, some very interesting work that was done uh, by a Swedish scientist uh, called uh, Helberg in the late 50s, early 60s. What he showed was that um, when you dose every single day, this happened to be ferrous sulfate. Um, after about three weeks, there was a dramatic reduction in bioavailability. In other words, um, if I remember correctly, uh, in his studies, the average bioavailability on day one was about 13.9%, let's say 14%. By the time he got to day 21, it was about 6%. Hmm. So what's that all about? Well, first of all, it actually uh, challenges the, this concept, bioavailability is not a simple subject mm. here, but it challenges the, the conventional wisdom that ferrous sulfate or ferrous fumarate is 15% or 20% you know, bioavailable. Well, if you look at, at the end of a month, okay, it's uh, you know, 15 or 20% of that. Why is that? Because the body, as I mentioned earlier, the body has to be protective and doesn't want there to be an excess of iron. So there's a, there's a shutdown. It's something called a mucosal block, it used to be it's an old term, whereby um, this is the way the body lands up uh, uh, protecting from you know, overabsorption. So when doctors are giving a ferrous salt, for, uh, take this daily or twice a day, whatever it is, um, what they don't realize is that uh, in the second month, um, there is a markedly diminished uh, bioavailability if the patient's still taking it because side effects land up uh, usually kicking in within a week or two. Um, the patient will come back, uh, hemoglobin gets 
uh, usually the folks are put on because of uh, anemia. Hemoglobin gets checked. Um, the response isn't that great. So what do they do? They ramp up the dose. So the dose goes up. The bioavailability hasn't changed. It's now still low. Mm -hmm. But side effects go up. Mm -hmm. So either the patient says, uh, I'm not going to take this. They usually don't call the, the doctor and say, I'm not going to take it. Some do. Most don't. Come back three months later, hemoglobin's <laughs> still, you know, still low. The dose gets bumped up. Or the doctor says, oral iron is useless. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, let's just... Uh, you know, sometimes um, you know, give a dose of intramuscular or, or intravenous. I mean, it happens. So, in a sense, um, there is this uh, this misunderstanding of what the true bioavailability is of a ferrous uh, salt. I think leads to really misapplication of you know oral line therapy. Chelates. Um, it is, there is one uh, you know, fairly small clinical study which has shown also a drop-off after 21 or 30 days, but not nearly to the same extent mm. of a chelate. And part of that may be because um, the iron is, is uh, part of it may be absorbed intact. Um, uh, I'm not sure I mentioned this before, but uh, with ferrous salts, you need a very low pH uh, in mm. order to uh, get the iron into solution. Iron cannot be absorbed if it's crystallized. And um, the area in which the pH is below 3, which is what's needed in order to keep ferrous iron in solution, is only uh, the, the first probably 3 or 4 inches of the duodenum. After that, where the pancreatic duct starts pumping in high alkaline you know, uh, 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 pancreatic uh, juice, Bicarb, pH rockets, ferrous iron crystallizes, can't be absorbed. Mm. So there's a very short segment of, of upper GI tract that can actually absorb ferrous iron. The chelate um, may not be so pH dependent because okay. it is um, you know, complexed you know, with the amino acid. Mm. And as a result, um, uh, may also land up being absorbed over a larger absorptive surface. Now, that may be one of the reasons why um, in the field people who use chelates get much fewer side effects because uh, it's, it's been postulated that mm -hmm. a lot of the irritation of the GI tract is because you're absorbing in a very narrow um, uh, you know, area in the mm -hmm. first several inches of the duodenum.